Okay, so this is an exciting one, but today I'll be making a fully updated 2024 guide on how to progress in early game. Keep in mind, I will not cover very like in-depth concepts such as like how stuff works. For example, I will mention what you want to do with a monster, right? I will say like fully max kill him, fully evolve him, all of that. I will not explain what evolution is, what skill ups are, right? For that, I do recommend either relying on the main story to explain it, or you can uh, rely on these uh, little guides that you find across the whole game, right? You will see question marks. They will sort of explain how each concept works. Just to make sure I speed up the guide a little bit more, I will not be going too depth into those. I'll mostly be explaining what to actually do in order to progress a lot. So first of all, I'll review uh, the progress I've made so far. So this is how much I managed to progress in a day. If you notice this, I can go into any of the events. You will see that is currently I have unlocked day three requests. And that's because I have started this account at like 9 p.m. on a Sunday. And I have finished at exactly 9 p.m. on a Monday. Uh, so today is Tuesday morning, that's why I have this unlocked, but I haven't touched the game since yesterday at all. And yeah, here's the progress that I've made. So for the account itself, it is currently level 50, which means that you will be able to not only have insane progress, but also claim the free light and dark 5 star uh, scroll from here. So if you're someone who's interested in rerolling, this is a decent option as well. Uh, team power stands at 609,848, that's what I've been able to achieve. Uh, this is what my summoner looks like, really it's just the starter gear you get for heat, plus uh, a sub weapon and a weapon from seal, right? Uh, these are his stats, uh, I will say this summoner stats do not matter for this guide, at least for the first day at all, so don't worry about that. Skill ups, uh, he has around a thousand of those, so uh, both the passive and utility are fully maxed. Uh, this one we don't care about, and the active skills are level 7 to level 8. Uh, what else? Monsters, I have a few built. I'll say I mostly used only 6 of these, uh, but I will also say that this one uh, I built, but I no longer use, so trust me, not needed. Huaki, amazing unit, but then again, probably not needed in this case, apart from very specific cases, so don't worry about it too much. This guy I just built for one of the raids, again, it doesn't have to be him, you can build any daughter unit, I'll explain that a little bit later on. The three main units you'll want is, first of all, Perna, uh, this unit is a non-negotiable, you will need it, otherwise none of this uh, guy will work without her. Uh, second one you will need is Colleen, uh, do not worry, you will get her fully upgraded completely for free. And the third unit you will need is another 4 star knight. Uh, what I mean by that is you will basically want to go into your monster book, check whatever you have summoned and you will want to use a souling option for a knight. So uh, you go to the 4 star uh, monsters, any element, check all of them what you have and in here you'll want to locate monsters that have the knight icons and it has to be a four star unit and it has to be a knight otherwise you will not be able to use the souling option so in most cases what you will want with these is some sort of a defense breaker unit i chose the dark penguin that's what i had if you do not have the dark penguin you can browse through other four star units you have you can, for example, go to Harmful Effect, select Defense Break, and check uh, whether you have that unit through here. I'm not even sure if there are a lot of 4-star uh, Knight-type units that have a Defense Break, but I know that one of them for sure is uh, the Water Vagabond, which you can actually get completely for free. He has a Defense Break in here, so if you have no other options, he will work just fine. But if you do have any other options, do feel free to browse through it and check what the best one is. Wait, I wonder if he has a defense break. He also has a defense break. So again, this guy, awesome option as well. And once you have your knight, you'll want to use the soul connection function right here. So uh, I can remove mine. Actually, no, I don't want to. I don't want to because all of the stats will drop. Uh, but what you'll want to do here is once you have your clean, 
you will be able to use the soul connection function to soul connect another four star knight type in order to fully max kill him fully evolve fully level up and fully awaken that unit making it much much better i will explain how to get your colleen maxed out in just a second but yeah that's overall for progress and for the content progress uh kairos hall of magic hall of fire level 10 done easy that's the only two you'll really need galagos i didn't touch much i only uh bought the several devil mons from here so i did like four stages and that's it really don't care about it this early on toa i have been able to complete the whole level 100 normal trial for ascension no trouble at all full order i think i only needed to manual one stage with it like level 80 or something spires of ascension i actually pushed all the way to 126 floor so you can have a lot of progress there you'll max out quite a few of the tower buffs there path of growth so for evolution materials you will be able to clear the highest level of path of training very easily path of adventure you can farm any of these three uh depending on the monster box that you have i farmed at uh, the third lance level two full order around 96 percent success rate easily i did not touch level three i will explain why i did not touch level three because i feel like it's actually a downgrade from level two but yeah uh runes six star purple legendary ones easily acquirable through this expedition didn't touch much however as was able to clear level four of the regular one didn't even bother touching this one yet uh, and for Ru raids yeah so i was able to do this 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 and this quite easily this one's a bit difficult without a proper cleanser so if you do invest a little bit of resources this one will be much much easier uh three of heroes i haven't attempted yet but i will attempt it later on just to see whether we are able to clear it and for seal i was able to do this one very easily as well this is the main raid you will want to be doing ugly on because First of all, no matter what your power is, you will be able to clear it very easily just with the units you have. Uh, so yeah, that's for the progress when it comes to this account. Now I will jump into a detailed guide on how I did all of that. Okay, so before we even start playing the game, there's a few things I want to mention. So first of all, uh, before you progress any further, I do recommend going through the uh, coupon codes that are available for the game these cycle quite a lot we usually get them every week every two weeks they last for some of them last a few weeks some of them last a few months so really it's hard to tell which will work just from this but i do recommend checking at least like the top 10 uh in any list that you have i personally use this website which is like incendar.com uh they have pretty much all of the codes locked for like the previous two three months uh if you have time, I do recommend checking all of them. There's a good chance a lot of the older ones are already expired, but the top ones will definitely still uh, work. Now, when it comes to summons, uh, you will immediately come across uh, this page. So this is the sort of welcome selective uh, summon banner. Uh, we're going to call it like that, right? And this is where you will be getting your Fire Phoenix Perna, right? So once you put any unit in here, you will be able to get one NAV5 from it. But uh, that NAV5 will be guaranteed as long as you get a NAV5 uh, summon proc, right? So there's a 1% chance to get it from a Mystical Scroll. That means on average you'll need like around 100 of them. But uh, the NAV5 will be guaranteed to be the one you have selected. So... Put up a Perna in here and use all your Mystical Skulls until you get it. Because Fire Phoenix Perna will be the main unit you will need for this whole guide. Now when it comes to other summons, you will also have an option to do a Selective Summon. And I think you unlock it at around like Story... Act 1, Story Stage 13 or something like that. Uh, that would be like my guess. And how it will look like is it will basically be a scroll looking like this, Selective Summon. Uh, once you complete the Goblin Town Chief quest, which is like Act 9, Act 10 or something. I mean Act 1, uh, Stage 9, Stage 10. You will be able to get this and this one will allow you to select a single 
uh, 10 monster pool of your choice. There's a lot of units in there, but for that one, I personally recommend choosing the Fire Sky Dancer. You may not need her as much right now, but she will be amazing uh, further down the line. Okay, and now let's talk about the progress itself. So the first thing you'll want to do is you'll want to select one of the three summoners. Either Cleave, Orbia, or Kina. Uh, you do not want to select Soleda just now. If you plan on playing her, you can uh, play her later on. But for now, select either one of those three that are available at the very beginning and complete the whole Act 1 manually. Do not use the skip button. That's a little bit of a waste. Uh, the quests here are super easy with whatever units you have. So just go through this, it will take like probably a good hour or something like that because there's a lot of walking, there's some manual dungeons, but complete this as soon as possible. And once you complete the whole act one, what you'll want to do is go to the menu and switch your summoner. You will have an option to play with Heath, the assassin summoner, he looked like this. And whenever uh, the dialogue introduces that summoner, like says accept a quest to play with him or whatever, you do want to play with Heat from now on until uh, we at least reach other PV content such as raids. So you do want to switch to Heat and I'll explain a few good reasons why. So one of the main reasons why you want to play Heat is, first of all, he comes uh, already at level 80, which will be a huge bonus to your stats. Second of all, he will come with already maxed out gear. Uh, all of your weapons will be plus 15, all of your accessories will be plus 15, and your sub weapon will be plus 15. I changed um, one of my sub weapons and one of my brain weapons, but basically you'll have purple ones uh, throughout. Yeah, these are the ones that I got as well. Uh, they are not the best, but they will be miles better than anything you will use uh, if you were using any other summoner, right? So you will want to be playing with heat. And what you want to be doing with Heat is you'll find that you are actually not able to progress in the story because he does not have the first eight acts. You only start at Act 9. And you will actually not be able to proceed with Act 9 before completing uh, the other eight acts on any other summoner. However, for this one, you'll have an option here which says Instant Complete. I'll show you an example. It will look like this, basically. Uh, it's just much cheaper, right? So in this, in Act Night, you want to do the Instant Complete. And the reason you want to do that is, first of all, uh, the rewards you get from these chapters are massive. And second of all, once you do those, you will actually unlock every single piece of content in this game. You'll notice that when you play with the other summoners, especially in Act 1, a lot of the content will be locked. But as soon as you complete the Act 9 uh, using the Instant Complete function, every single piece of content will be instantly unlocked. And the second reason you want to complete this is uh, particularly these boxes here, the first six, right? But apart from those, you'll get a lot of massive rewards as well. So for these boxes, you'll want to open all of them. Uh, first three will give you evolution materials and second, like the other three, will give you 18 purple six star uh, runes, which will be super useful for at the beginning of the game, because at that time you're mostly looking at 1 star, 2 star runes that you will discard immediately upon progressing. Second of all, you'll be getting a bunch of these awards. The ones we are paying attention the most is uh, the gems as well as the hero symbols. So open the hero symbols and equip the best ones on your summoner right here. So you go summoner, symbol, you'll equip these. Uh, you will notice once you have your monsters equipped, these are a massive jump in power. I think my ones uh, are giving like at least 15 to 20k power just from the symbols alone, right? And uh, for the gems, you're getting 18. So select six of each color and equip those gems on your sub weapon as well as all five of your weapons. Those will be a massive jump in power as well, right? For the other rewards, those are cool. As you can see, you get 10 mystical skulls here, 10 artifacts, a few legendary summons. Uh, use the mystical skull for the Fire Phoenix banner, of course. Uh, you will be getting 500 skill points, which is insane. Not only for heat, but it will carry over to other summons as well. So. It's going to be a massive jump in progress and will be required for one of the quests. You'll get a Devil Mom for your uh, Fire Phoenix. You'll get Maximization Marble, which is very important. 
and you'll get another five star selection tickets which personally i saved up but you can use for any other nf5 that you want uh, mythic wounds we don't really care about you'll also get another hero symbol which you can open sky stones will be super useful for powering up your runes in the beginning right uh, and yeah, apart from those, yeah, another 5 uh, light and dark scrolls and another 10 mystical scrolls for your turn up banner, right? So you basically want to insta-complete this, open up the boxes and immediately he build a unit that is called Colleen, this one, the fire harp. You'll get it for free when you open up Heath, right? Uh, you want to fully level her up, fully max skill her, fully evolve her and fully awaken her. You'll have materials to do all of that just from that single box. And yeah, once you have this uh, one built, you will want to equip one of those uh, runes that you received. I think uh, it was like full energy runes. As you can see, I still have those purple runes here. So you'll want to equip uh, a set of six energy runes from the ones that you got from those uh, boxes, right? And the second thing you'll want to do is you will want to use up those skill points that you got. So you will get around 500 of them. You want to use them all and you'll go to your summoner and level up a lot of your skills. So uh, the ones I recommend, max out the passive and max out the utility. After that, uh, ignore the attribute research and work on your active skills. I personally like to do uh, skill 1, skill 2, skill 3, then uh, the order skill and then the ultimate skill. But ultimately that's up to you, right? And another great thing that you will get when unlocking heat is you will actually get around 140k of these tokens and you will be immediately able to jump to like level 40 account uh, level which will allow you to claim all of these rewards uh, you'll get a bunch of account skill points which i personally put all into the bottom three because uh, the bottom three will basically boost your monsters whereas the top three will boost your summoners so for now we want to boost our monster because our summoner really doesn't do anything he's there just to be there and uh by boosting your monsters you're also getting the max amount of power which at this stage is still important like you'll notice people saying power is not important it is important in the beginning it is probably one of the most important things because it will give you bonuses as well as being able to do more damage and being able to receive less damage right and on top of that, uh, once you level up your account level to like 39 or 40, just from those tokens alone, you want to use them here as long as you have the option, right? Uh, you'll be getting a bunch of rewards, and a lot of these rewards include stuff like Mystical Scrolls, right? I think you'll get like at least 30 from here, so there's another 30 Mystical Scrolls to try out for the Phoenix banner. And since you have unlocked all of the content, you do want to join a guild for it as well, right? So in the guild, uh, most of the stuff will not be as important, like these rewards are very minimal, right? Fortune of Wheel, again, nothing special. What you want to focus on are these. So if you're joining later on in the week, you'll notice that a lot of these rewards will be unlocked, especially if you're in a more active guild, right? And while we don't care much about the first eight, a five-star Devilmon is gonna be a huge one. I started playing on Sunday, so the Devilmon was already unlocked, which was a huge boost to uh, the Phoenix. And of course, with the five-star Devilmons, every single Devilmon you get, you instantly wanna be uh, adding it to the Pernus skill tab, right? For me, he already is maxed out, but you personally wanna keep maxing out this unit as soon as you can. And if your guild is high enough level, you will also want to go to the guild crafting table and in here you have the option to boost XP, boost remedy, right? So some of it will you probably not have it unlocked, but at, as long as you have like level 1 unlocked, you can craft this low XP boost remedy which will boost uh, your summoner XP by 30%. So it's not required, but it is like a nice... A decent boost to everything that you do. Also, here's a reminder that since you have leveled up your account to around level 40, you'll also want to go into the shop. If you haven't claimed your like daily stuff, of course, do that first. But you'll want to go to account level benefit tab and in here you'll want to buy everything that you're able to do. So uh, do not buy these two yet. Uh, you will want to buy them eventually. But you will still be a little bit low on crystals for now, which you will need for skipping some of the studies. So do not buy these yet. Uh, do buy the 10 mystical scrolls, the Devilmon, and uh, 
both of these mystical scrolls if you are able to based on your level one of them unlocks at level 80 other one at level 45 why did i say 80 i said 40 uh one unlocks at 40 one at 45 you want to unlock those as soon as possible as well extra chances to summon a fire phoenix and with the amount of mystical scrolls that you get i'm gonna assume that by now you have been lucky enough to get a fire phoenix if you haven't don't worry i'll explain in just a bit what you can do but uh you already have your fire harpo build right what you want to do is use the soul connection uh system in order to upgrade another unit to maximum so how the soul connection system works it basically it takes the default grade of a monster as well as the type of the monster so this one is a knight and moves oh my god uh basically take the same type and save grade monster and you are able to use your colleen as material or like a parent let's say like a parent uh unit and you are able to soul link another unit no matter whether it's evolved and evolved skilled and skilled all of that it will become immediately uh fully leveled up fully skilled fully evolved and fully awakened which will save you a bunch of resources you have received resources to uh fully upgrade your dark vagabond as well as the light um what's it called epicion priest that's not needed save those resources you will have a uh, better use for those resources later on instead use the soul connection uh feature and soul connect a decent net for uh night my recommendation if you are able to get a dark penguin do souling him if you cannot go into the monster book check what units you have when it comes to four star night types so uh go to the four star tab and check all of the night types see what you have my recommendation is to soul link a defense break unit because it will help you out with clearing the dungeon so if you don't have the dark penguin and if you don't have any other better options you can do the water vagabond he has a defense break on his first skill and this unit is completely free i believe from the monster story which we should be able now this is the fire one i know you received the water one through the quest somewhere it might be like act two act three so you'll get that one from there guaranteed and now if you have been super unlucky with your mystical scrolls and still didn't get a fire phoenix uh, this is where you'll want to do a little bit of a pause and switch back to any other summoner uh, that you want you can start with the one that you actually want to be playing right uh, i do recommend going with possibly the one that you have started with because it will be cheaper uh, along the way but let's say we'll go to Ordia, right uh, you have already completed act one on it so now the goal is to get a lot of mystical scrolls and what you'll want to do is it will take some time but hey that's just what happens when you get unlucky right and you will want to progress through the main story uh, manually uh, do not skip with crystals because it will be very expensive and you will need those crystals later on but just proceed with the story oh there we go as you can see you get the water vagabond act 2 chapter 2 so you're able to soul link him at any point so proceed with act 2 act 3 along the way you'll be getting a mystical scroll there mystical scroll uh in other places right you want to proceed with the main story at act 5 uh there will be a big event i'm not sure if i still have it looks like i don't uh, there will be an event called like Rahil Guard or whatever and it will basically reward you based on how much of the main story you have completed you'll be getting a bunch of mystical scrolls a bunch of crystals from there and the last reward for completing act 5 last chapter will be uh 50 mystical scrolls in there you can see like you get 10 here as well oh no this is act 5 there we go uh, i think I'm not quite sure which one you need to finish it might be like act chapter 46 or something like that uh, but trust me it's not that difficult and at that point you will get another 50 mystical scrolls and you will be able to uh, summon hopefully your fire phoenix by then right and then even if you are still unlucky enough to not get that what you'll want to do is you want to open up your area exploration you'll want to go to the Kaslan tab 
and select the very first quest and do instant complete. It will look like this, basically, right? Uh, it might be yellow, it might be purple, don't worry. Go make sure that you select the first one, otherwise if you select this, it will actually complete uh, the quest you don't want to complete. Uh, but select this one and do instant complete and you want to do this on all four summoners. Uh, so you do it with your main summoner, you switch to Kina, you switch to Cleave, you switch to Salada, you switch to Orbia, whichever one you haven't been playing yet. You want to insta complete this. The first completion will cost you like 2000, but uh, for every second and further completions it will only cost you 400 crystals. And the rewards you get in here are massive. So first of all you will be getting some mysticals from it, you will be getting legendary scrolls, light and dark scrolls, transcendent scrolls, which guarantee their fives, a bunch of legendary scrolls, more light and dark scrolls. Uh, I think there's even a devil mod mixed in there, which will be useful for a fire phoenix. And by then, hopefully, you will be able to get your fire phoenix. If you still somehow don't get it, I, I mean, at that point, yes, you want to push uh, the main story further, but at that point, you also might just want to reset your account. Because, I mean, that's some godly tier unlucky summons you have there. <laughs> but yeah, hopefully, you get your fire phoenix by then. Okay, so with all of the story mode struggles too, hopefully you now have a Fire Phoenix. So, with this guy, what you want to do is awaken level 9 as soon as possible. You should have enough Breath of Life, Gold and other materials in order to fully evolve him from the previous boxes that you have received as long as you don't build your Dark Vagabond and your Light Epicurean Priest, right? So with all those materials, Awaken level 9, Max Evolve him if possible, if you see that you're missing stuff like Rainbow Mons or a Breath of Souls, you can always jump to some Path of Growth, go to Path of Draining and starting with level 14 you will be able to get uh, the Breath of Souls as well as Rainbow Mons throughout the whole dungeon, right? So you want to get your Perna as maxed out as possible, so Awaken level 9 at least. I will explain how to get further awakening soon. Max evolution skills as much as you can, depending on how many devil mods you have, right? If you get duplicate perna pieces, for now, uh, invest them into skill points instead of awakening. So you'll notice that level 10 requires you 20 months, uh, Phoenix pieces. Do not further awaken perna before at least her second skill is maxed out. Once this is maxed out using devil mods or pieces, then you can invest further uh, duplicate pieces into Awakenings, but you want to get this maxed out as soon as possible, right? And with this, uh, what you'll want to do is you'll go to the quest, you have already completed Act 9 uh, using the Instant Complete function, you'll want to go to the Area Exploration and you'll want to do the Sierra quests. There are only three, so you can do them manually, there's really no need to skip them. Uh, all area exploration quests are full order, so you don't even need to manually play them. Uh, from the quests I'm seeing, it's mostly just uh, farming a couple materials, killing a couple monsters, really nothing special. You'll get amazing rewards, such as this 100% XP boost, right? You'll get a bunch of XP potions, uh, you'll get Sky Stones, Rainbow Mons that are needed for evolution, right? So you want to complete this as soon as possible, and the reason for this is look at the XP reward. It will not be impactful on heat, however, it will be super impactful on other summoners. So once you complete this, you'll want to switch to all four of your other summoners, and you'll want to instant complete the Sierra story. Basically, you have all of the uh, stories uh, like unlocked most likely, right? Uh, so you know what, I'll just show you. So yeah, here I am on my Orbia, right? Uh, you'll notice that it doesn't matter if you haven't completed uh, story mode on your summoner yet. Like you can see, I haven't even started Act 6. The area exploration will be available for you. So you want to skip all of these, right? Uh, except for the Kaslam one, you want to complete only the first one, right? Uh, you skip all of these and you go straight to Sierra one. And from here on out, you can either do them manually or you can skip them. Skipping only costs 500 because uh, you will pay 2000 but you'll get 1.5k of them back, right? You can also do that manually, really doesn't matter. The reason this is super OP is because of the massive XP gains. Your summoner, like this summoner will still be super weak. It will be like level 20 or something. Once you complete that, uh, that single 
Sierra Monster Story, like these three ones, once you complete all of them, you'll jump to like level 60 instantly. And at level 60, you'll have the ability to enhance uh, your skills. So what you'll want to do is, uh, currently you'll see that skill points are a complete mess here, right? But just to uh, give you an example, you'll want to select one of your active skills. Uh, I think the basic attack goes the highest at least. And you'll want to level it up to level 10. You can reset it later, right? But the reason why you're doing this is if you go to quest, you go to summoner's way and there will be a quest called summoner power in the novice summoner tab, right? You do not want to instant complete these because this is way too expensive for the effort it takes. But in here you'll notice that there are five quests at uh, each active skill level 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. Once you do this on every single summoner, you will be getting all of these rewards five times. So you will be getting... Uh, I believe this is like 6 Fatal Runes, 6 Energy Runes, and 6 Rage Runes. These are legendary 6-star runes. So that's 18 in total, I believe, if I'm not wrong. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot scroll here for whatever reason, but yeah. So you'll get getting a bunch of runes from here. You'll do that 5 times with every single summoner. And on top of that, you'll get some 6-star gear, which you can either use, or I will explain how to do... Uh, powering up for other gear way later into the guide, right? So with these runes, once you complete these quests, you will want to build your three core units. So Perna, in most cases, will need either Rage or Fatal runes. Uh, really, it doesn't matter. In the beginning, you're really just looking for the best stats. If you notice that, let's say, you only have crit damage... Uh, on something like a fatal rune, you can use a fatal rune, right? If you don't have crit damage at all, use something like crit tape, use something like attack percent, right? Uh, Perna, you want to build full offensive, mine is currently on a bit of a tankier build, he's HP percent, crit rate, not crit damage, and attack percent. You want to use percentage values on slot 2, 4, and 6. Uh, these ones will always be the same, so for these ones, you mostly want to look at the substat. And you want to get at least the main set completed. So for the uh, one I have, it has four range runes, so it has crit damage set. Fatal works just fine. Full energy works just fine, really. As you can see, the second set I have is a broken one. I was just mostly looking at substats and main stats. It will be hard with the limited amount of runes you have. But with these runes, build up your Perna, build up your Colleen on a very tanky HP set, and build your third unit that you have soul linked on any other runes that you have. As you can see, it doesn't make sense, like, uh, once or later on, and you're looking at this guy for whatever reason, maybe, right? Uh, this set does not make sense on him, however, that's the best that I had, and it just worked, right? So, yeah, build up all three of those units, Power up your runes to as high as you can, depending on how much material you got. Start with plus 12 on every single rune and move on to plus 15 if you are able to with the amount of resources that you have. And on top of that, you have received a lot of these books and effect stones uh, from one of the quests. So you will want to open them up. I'm talking, of course, about these things. So uh, the Supreme uh, Galaxy Stones and the books. And with those, you will want to upgrade all of your monsters' runes, right? Uh, again, you might be limited in which ones you get. Uh, for Perna, you of course want offensive ones like crit damage, attack, crit rate, accuracy, all of that, right? For the tankier ones, like for Colleen, you want to focus mostly on HP. But if you are not able to get it, you can do something like defense as well, right? Just grind your monsters because that will be a very huge jump in power. And after doing all of that, now comes the fun part. You will get some crystals as well as rainbow mons, storage space, all of that, right? So for completing a lot of these stories, you will require crystals and they will be hard to come by apart from the main event uh, you get for completing the story, right? So one of the shortcuts how you can do this, especially with heat, is through the area dungeons. Uh, these area dungeons will unlock as you progress through the story. And for these ones to unlock, you essentially would need to complete the story itself. However, since you have completed Act 9 on Heath, 
all of these should be unlocked for you. So uh, let me just quickly switch to heat and I'll explain what these are in just a second. Okay, so area dungeons, right? Uh, you will find area dungeons for every single continent there is. So Rudlin, Tesca, Aya, Florence, Rugarma, Contana, Sierra, right? You can see that some of them even I haven't completed yet. You can do these manually, however, they are super nice to do with just quick battle opportunities, right? You will notice that the further you go, the better the rewards get, and these rewards will be super impactful, both for uh, gaining a lot of crystals as well as just getting materials in general, right? You will be getting a lot of XP potions, you'll be getting a lot of 3-star, 4-star, and 5-star enablements, which will be needed to evolve uh, your Perna, for example, right? If you are still uh, lacking on those, and you'll be getting a bunch of crystals which you will later use to skip a lot of the story as well. So I have completed most of these and you'll notice that when you are on Heath, right, uh, you will be able to quick battle a lot of these because your power will be so high above any other uh, requirement that it will actually give you the auto battle option. So let me just collect the inventory real quick. Okay, there we go. So I cleared some inventory space and if we go into here, you'll see uh, this, the choir power, right? For me, uh, the current one is super high because these are like the last continent stages. You can do them manually if you want by just using the battle star button. But trust me, uh, you have to manually play these. And if you're someone who wants to progress on order, it's just a chore. So uh, at least for the first continents, right? Go through all of them. I don't know why some are locked, honestly, but yeah. Uh, go through all of them, complete all of these using the quick battle option if you want. Uh, you can play manual up to you, that depends on how much time you have. If you are lacking some quick battle tickets, I believe you get some from one of the quests, but usually quite a few are available from various events, right? So for example, right now, as of me, uh, according to this, uh, there's some quick battle av tickets available from this event. There's also a package which only costs 500 crystals that also gives you a uh, hundred of quick battle tickets. As you can see, I purchased it once as well. So if that's still around, that's another option. And you want to complete as many of those as you can to stock up on crystals, uh, rune space, rainbow mons, devil mons, all of that, right? These will help you tremendously. And now it's a little bit of a time uh, to summon a few monsters, right? Uh, so you remember that you have received a maximization blessing from one of the quests here, right? This you will want to be using in uh, the blessing altar. So if you select the mystical option, legendary option, or if you have the transcendence call option, you will see this altar's blessing, right? Uh, this is where you will want to be using your maximization blessing. So if you have one, uh, click on here, it will activate, it will also give you confirmation, right? But it will activate the maximization blessing, which means that whenever you summon a NAV5, regularly it has a 40% chance to summon uh, one of the three put into here, right? With the maximization blessing, that chance will be 100%, which means that the next three NAV5s you get will be guaranteed to be all three of these, right? So I have already gotten Perna from mine right here. I have, obviously I have already used multiple blessings here, but uh, you will want to maximize your blessing and you will want to be using your legendary and your transcendent scrolls on this blessing. Uh, you want to maximize it and your main goal is to get a second copy of Perna so you could further skill it up or uh, further awaken the unit. For other two units, Completely up to you. I personally recommend these three. Uh, Huaki, you will definitely want to have as your second NAV5 build. For the third one, it sort of depends on what you have. I used my 5-star selection ticket to pick a Fire Paladin. I will not use her anytime soon. However, she is a super amazing unit that you will find useful in a lot of both PvP and PvE content. So yeah, uh, maximize your blessing and use some scrolls in order to get a duplicate perna from there. And at this point, you are looking at all of your units being uh, evolved to the maximum. Uh, they are level 90, 
uh, your Colleen as well as the Soldink unit have max skills. Bagna may not have max skills, but he definitely has multiple Devilmons put into him, right? So your goal is to get this uh, maxed out as soon as possible. If you cannot have it maxed out just yet, do not worry, you will get more Devilmons, right? But the next step will be farming a lot of runes. Now, you do get quite decent runes from there, but you do want specialized sets when it comes to further progressing through the content, right? You can, I suppose, skip this step if the runes you got for uh, Perna have been good enough, right? Like if you have high attack, high crit rate, high crit damage, high accuracy. You can sort of skip this step, but in most cases the runes you get will just not be enough and you will want to farm some runes. So for the runes, um, of course with Perna, uh, the tier landscape will be the easiest option. However, if you have units for any of these, feel free to farm them as well. This one, uh, what you really need is just a very good cleanser for damage or damage effects. So stuff like the Wind Penguin, stuff like the Light Howl would completely carry these dungeons. Uh, Forgotten Earth Shrine, you really just need a single unit and that is the Water Lich. Uh, once you have Water Lich on very high attack speed and accuracy, he will completely dominate this. And you can sort of farm this with Perna as well. Uh, the one I found was Tear Glance, and from there on, uh, your goal is to push to at least hard mode level 1, which is where 6 star runes start to drop, right? There are 5 hard levels in total, and I'll talk about why you don't want to uh, farm level 3 just yet, right? So with hard mode levels, uh, of course, the difficulty scales quite a bit. I have been able to farm uh, level 2 quite consistently, as you can see, uh, I don't think I can even show how many runes I've done, right? Yeah, I don't think it says there. Or does it? Nah, it doesn't, unfortunately. Yeah, I think previously it said how many runes you did, but I can't seem to find it. Anyway, uh, with these, you will want to farm a lot of runes until you can build all three of your units actually properly, right? So let's say uh, your Perna, you ideally wanted to have attack the damage attack, or attack crit rate attack if you're struggling with crit rate substats, right? Uh, your Colleen, you want to at least have somewhat decent HP because her heal is scaling with her HP. So the more HP she has, the more she will heal. For the third unit, sort of depends. I mean, for this guy, all you need is accuracy and a little bit of tankiness, which I have both of. So that was enough. So basically, with the rune farming, you will want to farm quite a few runes, upgrade them to plus 15. Uh, again, just like you did before, grind them with various like sunstone, not sunstones, what are they called? Effect stones, books you'll have plenty of. If you are lacking some books, you can actually look into completing challenges such as uh, like the Spires of Ascension, which give you like 12 of each. I think there was another one, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, power. Now, powerful equipment only gives gems. I think one of them gave, yeah, I think this one I haven't completed because uh, I wasn't lacking any of them, but you can do these ones pretty easily. This is just equipping a galaxy stone. I think next one was like a soon sunstone or moonstone. So you'll get six books and six effect stones from here. Again, you can do this on all five summoners, which will give you 30 of each. That's plenty. Uh, you will be able to easily get enough grinds in order to upgrade your runes a lot. And believe it or not, once you do all of that, your power will be so high that at that point you can start farming on your main summoner. So let's say if at this point you wanna switch to your main summoner, you have all your unit, uh, all three of your main units beautifully built, maxed out runes, all of that, you may get some artifacts, you should get them from one of the studies, I believe, so just make sure to get some of the blue artifacts, and for upgrading those artifacts, I think there was one of the quests, yeah, artifact power right here, uh, you can unlock this, you'll get 45 of these blue materials, as well as 40,000 of these stones, with these you will be able to max out three blue artifacts, as you can see I did right here, so I have plus 15 artifact on Perna, this is pretty much the only good artifact on Perna, but if you don't have it, just feel free to go with whatever what you got. Uh, my Penguin has a maxed out artifact, and Colleen has a maxed out artifact as well. 
Uh, in order to do that quest, you will need to unlock the shiny box, which only is available in Alchemy Level 3. So before you unlock this recipe, you will need to promote a bit. Uh, so you can promote by clicking these promotion requests, and in order to unlock that box, you'll need both your Alchemy at Level 3 as well as your Processing at Level 3, since Alchemy Level 3 requires items from Processing Level 3. You can buy these items, but then again, uh, in the beginning of the game, you will really struggle with these uh, currencies used in the exchange market, and you will want to eventually promote uh, them all to the maximum level, so might as well just do it. It won't take long, it will take you like at maximum good 20 minutes to promote everything to level 3 right here, right? And at that point, you will be able to craft this box, you can do this quest on all of your summoners, so again, you will be receiving a lot of materials such as uh, these blue upgrade pieces, you will be receiving a lot of rune pieces, and if you push further, you can even receive transcendence materials, which will be used to transcend one of your other summoners, he does not have a transcendence, but if you want to level up your summoners past level 60, you will be able to uh, transcend them. I was able to transcend them up to level 3, which allows them to go up to level 72. And if you farm it a bit further, you will be able to get them to the maximum 90 as well. But yeah, overall, when it comes to switching summoners, if you do decide to do it, uh, what you'll want to do is unequip some of the stuff that you are currently using, right? Your main summoner will still not be close to level 70 by now, so you will not be able to use any of the symbols, unfortunately, which are a huge boost to your power. Like, if I un unequip one of these, you'll notice that I'm losing a whole 6,000 of them. Uh, the other three are losing like 3 to 5k as well. So that's a huge drop in power, but it's definitely still manageable. Uh, for other items, you will want to unequip all four accessories and add them to your storage. So you'll go there, uh, you will add these items to your storage. So let's say this is the accessory set, right? Like these are the earrings, these are the, uh, what's it called, necklace or whatever. I'm of course talking about the plus 15 ones, I currently have them equipped. But once you transfer to storage, these four are the only pieces of gear that are transferable between summoners. So uh, you can add these plus 15 items to your storage and then take them out from any other summoner and it will be a massive boost to your power compared to whatever they have uh, where they will have like two star three star gear uh, at level zero that does not even compare like these will be even at the horrible stats they are they will be superior and yeah now whichever summoner you play is up to you i will just give you general stuff where you can push even further i did all of this on heath because you simply get more stats to your monsters more stats to your summoner which personally for me worked out a little bit better right so at this point you're looking at like a good 500 to 550k power if you're playing on heath and a little bit less like 100k less if you're playing on any other summoner but from there on out gaining power becomes a little bit harder however Here's the main sources of power that I found to work really well, right? So, the first thing is the Trial of Ascension. So, this is limited competence, so you do want to complete it as soon as possible, especially if you start playing closer to uh, the reset day, let's say like the Trial of Ascension resets in a day or two, you really want to push it further, right? So, you'll go to the normal mode and try to push as far as you can. I did everything on order except stage 80 where I needed to do a little bit of manual gameplay because this guy is super annoying to kill if you don't have a cleanser, something like a water Garuda or a blue or a light howl, right? Without a proper cleanser, this boss is a little bit annoying, so you may need to manual it, but the rest I was able to fully order with just uh, the main team that I have, which is Perna, Colleen, and a Soul Link unit to Colleen. And once you complete a push for DOA, you'll want to go to your Ascension powers, and you'll want to level up the first two levels of each powers in this tree and in this tree. Uh, these are super useful, however, uh, you will notice that whenever you level up, you don't uh, get a pop-up saying that you increase your power. However, the power will increase because those first two 
are, are the things that give you actual stats. So this is uh, the, the immemorial power is basically stats given to your summoner and the summon power is stats given to your monster. So uh, this one, uh, the same level, like the same upgrade level will give you like three to four times more power compared to immemorial power. That's why you will want to summon, uh, rather focus mostly on the summon power. The general rule I have is to have the blue uh, summon power tree around three to four levels above the immemorial tree. Uh, so for example, if all of the upgrades here are level two, I would upgrade all of these to like level five or six before going back to the immemorial power because you simply gain more power in here. You can upgrade some of these as well. Like you can see I started a few extra levels here. I do not recommend going level 3 or further because the first two levels only require you to use uh, the silver tokens which are available quite easily but after that you will need to use uh, green tokens, you will need to use uh, yellow tokens, uh, the orange tokens, right? And you want to save those for the first two trees. So with those TOA upgrades, uh, you will get the silver tokens from here and for the other tokens you will want to go to the Spires of Ascension. And once you complete the TOA, uh, you will want to push Spires a bit. Uh, the first levels will be super easy, trust me, hey, here's, here's the deal. I have played all of these stages and Spires on all, right? No manual gameplay at all. Yes, it will be pretty difficult. You may not be able to reach 126 like I did. You may only be able to do like 40, but 40 is more than enough to get a lot upgraded, right? So what happens here is once you complete a stage once, uh, you'll notice these three bubbles, right? You can either do it by clicking on a stage or you can just click this challenge tab and in here you'll see challenges, right? All of the challenges are now the same. They used to be different, but they have made every challenge the same now. The first challenge will be uh, beating the dungeon without any fire monsters. Second one without water monsters. Third one without wind monsters. Naturally, since our teams are uh, showcased in this guide, they evolve a lot around fire units. The first uh, challenge will be the hardest. As you can see, I have two fire units. I cannot enter the stage. As soon as I take the fire units out, the stage is available, right? So what you'll want to do is uh, try to complete as many of these challenges as possible. I would personally recommend like let's say if you're someone who was able to push all the way up to let's say level 80 right for the regular stages. Don't go back to level 1 and do these challenges because you'll notice that as you go up uh, the rewards increase a lot, right? 4.5k at these ones compared to 750, right? So if you're someone who was able to do level 80, go back like 30 floors and just start with challenges there, right? Like at level 50, in most cases, uh, your summoner and one of your units will be able to carry it through. As long as you are able to complete the uh, non-fire stage, so this one basically, the first one, the other two will be super easy because Colleen and Perna will completely destroy anything in their path, right? So as long as you're able to do the first stage, you will be able to do the second and third stages very easily. So the first stage will dr drop uh, these green tokens, the second stage will drop these purple tokens, and the uh, third challenge will give you the yellow tokens. And these tokens you will use to push up uh, the immemorial power and summon power past level 2. So you can see uh, my upgrades are already like level 14, level 13, right? And the costs increase quite a bit, right? I could easily get more of these tokens. I'm mostly limited by the silver ones. And for the silver ones, you will unfortunately just have to wait until Trial of Ascension resets. But just with a single rotation, I was able to upgrade my immemorial power. So basically the summoners upgrades uh, two of the towers to level 13, one to level 11. And for my monsters, I was able to get HP to level 13 and attack and defense to level 14, which in total, if we look at our Perna, for example, just from Power of Ascension, she has 1.3% of her power from there. So that is a good, what, like 2000 power from... Uh, the monster tree, right? And my summoner also has, where can I see the power real quick? Power of Ascension is 1%, so another like 1.5k from uh, the TOA as well. 
Also, one thing I didn't mention in the beginning of the video is if you are ever stuck on not having enough crystals, not having enough energy, right? A safe option is to always go back to either the main story or the area exploration on either your heat or any of the other summoners and you can simply just grind this one. This is pretty much one of the contents that doesn't need any energy at all in order to complete. So whenever you're stuck with no energy, no longer have any crystals to refresh it, you can always fall back on the story because most of these will give you various rewards. Uh, some of them will give you crystals that you can use to refresh your energy as well. You can always fall back on these in order to have something to do. Summoner's Way, another option. It's a little bit harder to do, but it's a very good option as well. Uh, if you want to see what quests I did myself, right? So I have completed Summoner Power and Artifact Power on Heath. So all of the ones I completed were pretty easy to complete. I didn't do any difficult quests, right? Uh, for the intermediate summoner, I have Attribute Master maxed out. This one is also super easy. All you have to do is go to your summoner. Basically, you get some points, let's say from here, right? You put all of them into the light element because you will not have some of these unlocked, especially if you're playing on other summoners who are like level 50 only. The light one actually is unlocked, I believe, once you reach at least level 60. So you'll be able to upgrade this once and then you can reset it and put your skill points back into wherever you want. And after doing that, all of the quests here will be completed since the last one only requires you to reach level 10. With this, you will be able to get uh, 5 of these golden artifacts and 50 of these silver ones if you do it on all 5 summoners, right? For the other quests, I did a few of these. Uh, really, it's just for fun, like I didn't even mean to do these. Uh, I didn't push any of the other ones, however, this one... Was it this one? No, it wasn't this one, it wasn't this one. But yeah, uh, some of the power, this one you will be able to do uh, further if you haven't done fast level 8 either. Other ones, um, equipping some gems to 5-star weapons, super easy to do and gives you some free reward as well. Didn't bother with wound power much, but again, super easy to complete if you're still missing uh, some of these items. Spark of Ascension Challenge, you can push it a bit since, let's say if you push to something like uh, level 80 Inspires, you can definitely do all challenges for floor 10, floor 30, floor 50. Floor 70 might be a little bit more difficult, but you can try to push for it because you will be getting decent rewards as well, right? And for the symbol power, I didn't bother because for these ones, you do need to have high level of alchemy, I believe. Is it alchemy? Yeah, it is. Uh, you will need level five minimum and level five, like promoting alchemy. You can ask anyone who ever did that is super annoying. So I didn't bother with it. You can, I mean, you will need to do it eventually. But it's just a little bit of a waste of time at this moment. And we are very close to the end of this guide, at least for what I did. I did a little bit of some miscellaneous stuff. So for example, if you have a lot of energy uh, stocked up but have nothing to do, like all of your units are awakened, all of your runes are awakened, what I did is uh, farm a lot of these repeats. Uh, so in Sierra, you'll see there is a repeat request will give you 11 unknown scrolls. This is not some kind of a massive upgrade, but I do find it nice because uh, here's the deal. There are five different uh, grades of monsters. One star to five star, right? Five star and four star units, you will notice in the book effects, will have various bonuses based on how many dupes you have summoned, right? So for example, this fire penguin, it is currently level three and it will get a 50 T defense and 2.2 evasion to himself, right? Uh, very similar to something like a uh, Fire Phoenix, where at level 7 he has 362 attack and 17.8 crit damage to himself, right? But for 3 stars, 2 stars and 1 stars, these bonuses are for the whole account. So you'll notice that I have a Fire Fairy at level 3 and she gives all Fire Monsters 9 attack. 9 attack is not a lot, but if you look at how many 1 stars, 2 stars and 3 stars there are, Imagine all of these units giving stats to all of your NAF4s and NAF5s as well. That will boost your book power a lot, right? So what you can do is just grind something like Unknown Scrolls, summon a bunch of them, uh, 
want to summon a lot of these. I grinded for like half an hour yesterday and I got like 300 of these announced calls and I barely scratched my energy. You'll notice that the rates from these are quite good. Like let's say I got three water net trees, right? Let me see if I have an upgrade to my book level. It looks like I might have upgraded the fire one. Okay, well, f we have an upgrade to a two-star uh, skull soldier, right? I have two fire units in my team. Just a single upgrade, look at this. A single two-star unit will give me an extra 43 power, which was all gotten from an extra 24 HP. So imagine I got that from a single 10 announced call someone imagine how much you can push it further again i got some sort of a dark unit it pushed my dark penguin by an extra 51 power that is a pretty big jump in power and if we look at any of the units in here how much the book power consists of that's around two percent right so uh just the book power alone has uh given them a total of 3000 power. And the last thing you want to start doing after having all of your monsters build, fully awakened, fully evolved, ruined up, grinded up, right, is to start working on your summer. This is the point where uh, you are honestly freely safe to switch to any summoner you wish. And if you do plan on playing a different summoner, this is not only where you should may want to but where you should because gear will be summoner specific apart from the accessories all of the other gear will be summoner specific so if you get a gear on heat you will not be able to get uh like you'll not be able to use it on any other summoner so you will want to start farming raids and you will want to start farming these raids on the summoner that you plan on uh mainly playing right so uh for the first three, it's really nothing special. Not too many people use these sets and they are pretty low level, so I personally don't recommend using them. Especially because in order to upgrade these sets at all, you will need to upgrade all the way to blacksmithing level 7. Like You can see that uh, the very first trade, uh, the drops you get, no wait, the very first trade you get the drops that can only be upgraded at level 5 and even then if you want to push it to 6 stars you will require level 7 regardless right for all of the raids in order to get 6 star gear you will need level 7 blacksmithing and it will be pretty expensive so i would say it's not worth doing that yet instead what i would highly recommend is going to this raid called ruined temple uh seal dungeon we call it seal most people will call it seal so if you see it referred as seal uh, do not be surprised but yeah this dungeon is the dungeon that will drop six star gear it will drop both accessories and uh, the some specific gear such as sub weapons and main weapons right and you will want to farm this dungeon a lot i barely farmed it and i only have two pretty crappy items you will want to uh, get a lot of these items and eventually uh, upgrade them and put them on your summoner and once you get some of that seal gear upgraded you can up equip it on your summoner you'll notice that seal gear has a very cool special effect which will increase your monster stats so your sub weapon will increase their hp and uh, the main weapons will increase their attack which will also be a huge power to or rather a huge jump to your power because you can imagine how much like remember how much power that single skeleton gave like 24 hp gave you like uh 50 power to two of your units right imagine how much 800 hp will give to three of them right or how much 85 attack will give to all three of your units we're talking thousands here so yeah uh you will want to start working on your seal gear my personal recommendation would be to first of all start with like plus 9 to plus 12 main gear so sub weapons as well as all of the other weapons i will not talk further about it uh, there are a lot of quirks when it comes to upgrading your summoner weapons such as uh, having the correct stats there is the thing called the succession method which is pretty difficult to explain and i know a lot of people struggle with it so i will leave it up to you to do some research on it i've made videos on it other content creators made videos on it succession method is the way to go to upgrade your gear 
Uh, so yeah, want to plan on mostly the succession method is of course used when you are planning on going to the mythic tier of uh, your weapons and sub weapons. So yeah, uh, that's a little bit further when it comes to progression, right? I'm not pushing it that much. Like I'm not pushing it that far. I'm just mainly focusing on what you can do in like a day, two days, three days, depending on how fast you play, right? So from here on out, the gameplay is completely up to you. If you have any other questions about the progression and about the guide, if you misunderstood some of the concepts, do let me know. Uh, I will help you out in the comments. And yeah, that's about it. That's how I got a level 50, 600,000 power account with just one day of gameplay. Do not worry if you're a bit slower. I have been play playing this game since 2022, so I do understand a lot of the concepts uh, that newer players might un not understand as well. There's no shame in that. We all start somewhere, trust me. When I started, I got 600k power after probably like half a year, so I, if you do it in like a week, <laughs> More power to you, boss. Like, you beat me by all kinds of right? So, yeah, that's about it. Hope you enjoyed and peace.